Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Proto and today we're going to be taking a look at the best settings for the Elgato Game Capture HD software. This will allow you to get the best possible video quality. Do you know that I'm using an Elgato HD in this tutorial, but it also applies to the HD60. So just in general, I'll be going through a rundown of all the settings I use and I'll also be breaking down other alternatives because some of the settings are down to preference. Okay, so this video was suggested by Harmonial Creep, but link to his channel will be down in the description. So first things first, you want to know whether you'll be recording in 30fps or 60fps. If you've got an Elgato HD and you want to do 60fps, you'll be limited to 720p. Link for that tutorial will be on the screen now or in the description. However, if you have the HD60, then you have to worry about it since you can record 1080p at 60fps. So if we jump into the software, you can see a gear icon, which is pretty much universal for settings. Anyway, in the capture tab, you want to set it to whatever you want your gameplay to be recorded at. Next, you want to have flashback recording enabled. This means that you can essentially go back in time with your gameplay and record only when you want to. If you're going to be doing streaming, then check enable stream command as well. Now if we go into the sharing tab, you can leave them as standard. Down at file exports, always have convert new videos to MP4 checked. If you do live commentary and webcam overlays as well, check the export to separate files. This is so that you can alter the video and audio separately in a third party editor like Sony Vegas. Since I don't do that sort of stuff, I'll just leave it unchecked. Now the updates tab is quite self explanatory, you want to make sure that's checked, then head over to the advanced tab. I have my decoder set to my current graphics card, I'm just going to mention that you will have different options available and unless you have a decent graphics card, you want to pick the software built in. Saying that, my graphics card is pretty bad and it can run it no problem. Leave stream command encoder to automatic and change the quality to highest, then make sure you click OK. If you click onto the info icon beside the capture card and look onto the input, you should either notice 1280x720 at 60fps or 1920x1080 at 60fps. If you don't, then it's probably down to the console resolution settings, which you'll have to go in and change. So going into the capture card settings, and in the capture tab, you want to make sure that your input setting is the one that you're recording from. For me, it's my Xbox 360. Input you want to set to HDMI unless you're recording from a PS3, in which case it'll be component. Set the colour range to expanded. Doing this will make it look a lot better. Again on the profile, set it to whatever you want. Since I've got the original Gato and I want to do 60fps, I'm limited to 720p. However, if you want to do 1080p, then you can't check the 60fps box. Now, if you're all fancy and you have the HD60, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But I recommend putting it on what you upload to YouTube. If you want to upload it the best, then obviously set it to 1080p at 60fps. However, if you're like me and you want to keep the file size down and you only upload to YouTube at 720p, you should be good at HD 720. Next, set your quality to best. I leave it on best because it obviously looks nicer, but if you haven't got enough storage space on your computer or it isn't good enough, try luring this to something like better or something similar. Also, uncheck convert standard definition to 640x480. For the one below, make sure you check that, which is stretch standard definition input. This won't really make a difference unless you're live streaming since we will record in HD. Now in the picture tab, you want to make sure that all settings are on zero, as standard. This makes it that you have more colour information when you want to colour create your footage. This does mean that once you've recorded your video, it will look extremely dull. However, I prefer to do it this way because colour correction will have more of an effect. You can also see my video here of the best colour correction settings for Sony Vegas. Overall, just make sure that these values are set to zero and that you colour correct in post-production or editing. If you're uploading straight to YouTube and you don't have access to colour correction, Set the brightness to minus 20, the contrast to 45, saturation to 50, and leave hue at zero. But only use your settings if you don't have access to a software like Sony Vegas. In the audio tab, leave gain at zero. In the profiles tab, I have me bothered to make one and there's really no need, so just leave that however it is. Lastly, in the advanced tab, I've set TV compatibility to two, which is what works for me, and after that, just click OK. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, thumbs up, and if you disliked it, dislike it. Drop a suggestion in the comments below and I feel you don't give you credit for it. Subscribe to show support and to stay up to date on my content. This has been Project and I'm out. Peace.